All right, all right. We're so glad that you're here today, and we already welcome those that are online. With, by the way, I, I think we ought to just give some mad love as well to the band today. Come on, it don't get no better than that. Would you give them a great big hand clap of praise? The band it was awesome. All right. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, they'll be back uh, at the end of the service today. Uh, we're on this series about Eve and Adam. It is a series uh, to women, for women, by a man which is a recipe for disaster. I mean, you know, if you're not careful. Uh, and so, I need, I can't, ladies, I just kind of threw out this whole series. Uh, and by the way, guys, you can get something out of it as well. But throughout this whole series, I need to know you're with me. Uh, I need to know you're out there. I need to know, you know, I need a little loving up here. So do I have any ladies in the house? Let me hear from you, ladies. Do I have any ladies? <laughs> Man, that is scary, son. Ladies, thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, so, now, uh, we're, we're talking about uh, this, the, the Eve and Adam and, and, and really gearing this so for, for Eve. Last time, we said, ladies, that you, and, and I'm not sure if it's really sunk in or not, and, uh, and by the way, just thank you for the, you know, text messages and emails and stuff that I got, you know, you know some really love out there for you guys, and uh, but I don't know quite sure if you bought into this or not, but if you realize the impact that you are the only creation by God that was not taken out of the earth. Uh, God, you know, he spoke the uh, you know, sun and the moon and stars into being and all that, but when he created the animals, he took them out of the dust of the earth. And he did all that to gear up to create man. And, and so, uh, and when he did all that, he said it was good, and then he created man and and, uh, and so, uh, so God, he, man is the crown creation of God. And then the Bible teaches us that you are created out of man. So if man is the crown creation, then, then r- literally you are the jewel of that crown of the creation. Now, the bottom line is that Satan knows that. So there, there's something about your specialness and about how God created you that you are suffering attack uh, by the devil. We, we, we brought this out, that the, the first words of Satan... Uh, recorded in the Bible was to a woman, and those first words were lies to a woman. And, and there's a reason why. The, the first attack of Satan was not to a man, but it was to a woman. And we kind of examined that, and we're looking at two big lies uh, that the devil says uh, to women. Uh, because we, we said that even though we're all emotional beings, God created us all emotional, the range of your emotions, ladies, uh, is greater than man. And, and nobody can deny that. We, and as, I'm not saying that as a criticism. It's just a fact that range of your emotions are, are out there. And if you're not careful, the emotional in your life can rule the spiritual in your life. Now, now the term spiritual is so vague for so many people. So what I kind of like to reiterate that and say this. If you're not careful, the emotional in your life will reign over the biblical in your life. And this was the first attack of Satan to a woman is to cast doubt on God's Word. And so, so it is the, the Word of God that, 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 that God, you know, formed and made and we believe and, and establishes our purpose. So if you're not careful, then your emotions can override the biblical uh, in, your, in your life. Uh, so line number one, and if you were here last week, and, and by the way, if you weren't here last week, I, I highly encourage you uh, to go on YouTube or go on our website and get last week's message because uh, it's very, very vital because we're going we're to do, today, we're going to do the flip side. Now, let me explain that, the flip side. There used to be a day when people owned records. D- does anybody know what, what a record, okay. Five, five of you. All right, so it was a record. You, you, it, was a, it was a vinyl uh, round disc. Oh, it was a CD. No, 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 no. Bigger, bigger than a CD. And, and some of you were saying, CD, what's that? But anyway, so, uh, so it was a record, and, and, and you had it, and you played it on a record player, and the, a record came with a song, but there was a flip side to the song. And, and normally, this flip side wasn't as good as the, you know, the side number one. But we're going to try to, you know, overcome that today. So we're, we're going to kind of, you know, hopefully, hopefully the flip side uh, is going to be as good as side number one. So line number one uh, to, 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 that the devil hit Eve with uh, and, and hits you with, ladies, is uh, you're not good enough. Line number one, you're not good enough. Uh, the way you are right now is not enough. God's kind of holding back on you. 
And, and that was a big deal to Eve, and that's where Satan hit her first, his first plan of attack. The way you are right now is not quite good enough. And so you remember I, I did kind of a Facebook survey, and by the way, I'm, I'm going to be doing another one pretty soon. But I did a Facebook survey to ladies, and I was sincere about this, saying the hardest thing about being a woman is, by the way, you, you're free to still answer that, the hardest thing about being a woman is, and so I kind of took those, and I'd been studying some things, and really, your responses just reiterated some of the things that I'd been thinking about. So last week, we talked about the seven areas where, where Satan kind of hits you in your emotions. And you need to get the, the message, you need to go on YouTube or go online and, and get that. But we said these seven areas are your parents, your house, your kids, your relationships, your career, your religion, and your past. So now, let's dive into lie number two. Lie number one is that, you, you, you know, you're, God's holding out on you. You're not good enough the way you are. Lie number two is this. And, 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 and keep in mind, there's always exceptions every week for, for the most part. Lie number two that Satan kind of convinces you of, that in God's eyes, you're lesser than a man. In God's eyes, you're lesser than a man. You're just a helper. You're the helper of God. Man, Now, you wouldn't say that out loud, uh, but you're being bombarded with that, you know, every, every time you turn around, especially, especially in church, with, with all of this talk about being submissive to your husband, and the husband ruling the wife, and the husband being he- over the wife, and then in a verse of Scripture we're going to read in just a moment, they, God says, I'm making a helper, you're a helper, as if that's a, that's a lesser thing. And so you're kind of being barred uh, with that. Now, ladies, we're, we're, entering, we're entering a political season. Uh, I, I don't know about you. I think we've been in a political season for the last 12 years. I don't know. But we're in this political season, and because there will be a woman uh, running for president, then what you're going to hear a lot is, is this war on women. War on women. That, 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 you know, men or whatever society, the culture has just pronounced war on women. And basically the war on women has to do with your body. And, and what you, the right that you have with your body to do with your body, whatever you want to do with your body. And you're going to be hearing that over and over and over again. And I just want to go on the record and say, yes, there is a war on women. Men didn't start it. God didn't start it. But the devil started it. And all God's women said, there is a war on women. Well, let me tell you why. Because you can put me in any pigeonhole you want to. I believe in a literal devil. And I believe that the devil, ladies, hates you first. I think you're the first on his hit list. Because of the, all the things that the devil hits you with and, and the load that you carry. And so Satan hates you. He's a real devil and he can't stand you. And he hates you. So, so we, 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 we have this that we go through. So last week I went to great lengths to try to explain to you just how special you are to God because you don't buy into that. Because this culture and society and the way people think of, you know, that how special you are to God. I, I, I took us last week back to Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7, where the Bible says that God formed man. And the, and the word form literally means like a mold, uh, you know, like you form a sidewalk. And God formed man from the dust of the earth. And then we went to Genesis chapter 2 and verse 22, where it says God made you. Now, it's a different Hebrew word. And the word made literally, literally means constructed. Uh, it, mean, it means built. God, God built you, glory to God. And uh, so we, we looked at that. But when, but when you read that woman came from man, you think that's lesser. When, when, you, when you read that woman came out of man's side, you think that's subservient. Uh, and, and especially when you read or God's purpose for you was in being a helper to man. Now, I, I want to I just say this real quick. Biology will determine whether you're a male or female. How many of you know that, all right? Biology will determine whether you're a male or a female. People argue with that today. People want to, to change it. That's, they want to try to change the rules. But I'm telling you, biology will determine whether you're male or female. But listen to me. And guys, I want you to listen to me as well. Just because you're male does not make you a man. Now, that was, that was better than you thought it was, guys. Just because you're a male does not make you a man. How many of you know boys in men's bodies? Don't, right now, listen, don't, don't say amen, don't hit your husband, you're not helping. <laughs> throughout this, listen, ladies, throughout this series, don't, don't be, don't. You need to listen to him. 
Don't do that. I don't need help. I'm a professional. Don't try this at home. Can't get an amen. Amen. I mean, you know, don't, you don't, don't help me out on my message, man. I'm just telling you. Uh, so, but just because you're a male does not make you a man. And just because you're a female does not make you a woman. So the bottom line is you've got to understand, you've got to come to grips that God created us male and female, and it is only through the power of God that he can turn male and female into the men and women God wants us to be. Somebody give God a hand clap of praise on that. Isn't that that's true. That's absolutely right. Now, we have to understand that. So, so the bottom line is you, nobody, no man or woman, is not going to find your purpose until you find the purpose in the Word of God, until you find the purpose for what God created. And it goes beyond God just making you a man or making you a female. God wants to make us into men, and God wants to make us into women. And, and so Satan hits you with this doubt, and the first doubt that he hits you with is doubting God's Word. And when you doubt God's Word, then you doubt God's purpose. Because you don't like this part in the Word of God that says God created you to be a helper. God created you out of the rib or out of the side of man. So let's, let's examine that today. Let's kind of let's unpack this today. Everybody take Genesis chapter 2. Take your Bible, turn it on, flip it on. Genesis chapter 2, turn to it in verse 18. Let's follow me, follow, follow along this progression. Genesis 2, 18, the Lord said, it's not good that man should be alone. Let's just stop right there. This is the first time in all of the Bible that God said something was not good. Created the birds and the, the air and the beasts of the field, he said it's good. Sun and moon and stars, it's good. Night and day, it's good. Creation of the oceans and the mountains, it's good. He, create, he created man, it's good. Created woman, it's good. But the, the first time that God said this is not good is when man is to be alone. God said it is not good that man shall be alone. And I think I know the reason for this is because God knew if he created Adam, he'd get lost. And he wouldn't ask for directions. Oh, God's women said. So he said, he said it's not good. It's not good that man be alone. I've, I've often said this, and I'm not, I'm not making light to any widow that we have here, and especially I said this in the last service over in the 930 service where we have a lot of widows that come to that service. I'm not making light of that because I know the husband that you love and you pour into when he dies, part of you dies and half of you dies and your life kind of gets sucked out of you. I understand that. But I'm telling you, man cannot live without a woman. I mean, he just can't. can't live without a woman. And so, so God said it's not good that man uh, is to be alone. He said, then he says, I will make him, keep going, verse 18, I'll make him a helper comparable to him. And when you read that, you think that's subservient. That's lesser. He's a leader. I may be comparable to him, but I'm not equal with him. I'm just his helper. Well, let's just see if that's what God meant. Let's go down to verse 20. So Adam gave names to all the cattle and the birds of the air and every beast of the field. For Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. And, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs, or side, and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the, the rib, which the Lord brought her to man. He made fashion to a woman, he brought her to man. Now, once again, we don't know how long this, we don't know how long it was. We read this, and, and I've read this forever, and we read this, and you know, God put Adam to sleep, creates Eve, brings her back, and but we don't know between that time that he created Eve, that he brought her back to man. We don't know how long that was. And, and the reason I think what happened here is that I think it was a long time, by the way, and it could have been a year, it could have been months, it could have been 10 years, it could have been 100 years. I mean, God puts you to sleep, you're asleep. And so I think that God is trying to let us know because he is the one that brought her to man that there's a time-space continuing in there because God wants every woman to know that your first and primary relationship is never to a man, but it is to God. And all God's women say it. And we have to understand that. So, so, so he, he brings her to man. Now, this is what in verse 23. And Adam said, and, and once again, we, we read this, we read this. If you've been in church any time, you read this a hundred times. Adam, said, now, Adam says, now this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And it didn't quite go that way. It didn't quite go that way. Uh, your, your, your translation may say that Adam said, this is now. This is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. The literal translation about this is at last. At last. Finally. 
Uh, there's a lot of emotion in here from Adam. Adam was lonely. No, nobody else was doing it for him. I mean, he was naming the animals. He was looking at the monkeys and the giraffes and the hippopotamus and all that. And he saw that they had mates. And, you know, he was kind of wondering uh, what was up with that. And he knew there was nobody comparable to him. He knew there was nobody with him. And so he says, at last, finally, there's emotion in here. He took one look at Eve and he went, at last, finally, bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. There's emotion in here. He was glad to see her immediately fell in love with her nothing else would do it for him he said at last and put it in southern vernacular he said dude here's a woman and she's naked and can I get an amen amen <laughs> it's a good day in the garden when God presents you a naked woman and all God's men said come on now right now, I told you this series is PG-13. And if you've got little kids in here, we have tremendous children's ministry in this church. Preschool and children's ministry. So if your kids are going to ask you, what a precious little butt naked woman. You deal with that on the way home, all right? Don't you put that off on me. She was naked. That's good. That's, that's a good day in the garden. Amen? I'm telling you. You shouldn't, talk, you shouldn't say that. Well, I'm saying it. It's a good day in Eisenhower. But anyway, so, so, anyway, so, 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 but, but what I want you to see is, this, this was not just him saying, this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. No, he was saying, at last, oh, Eve, you're the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. He said, God, I'm going to call her woman. By the way, God didn't call her woman. Adam called her woman. And he said, God, if it's okay with you, I'm going to call her woman because she, was, she is bone in my bone. She is flesh in my flesh. She is like me, but yet she is not like me. And God, I love her. God, you are a good God for giving me a woman in my life. And that's exactly what he's saying here. Now, I want you to understand this. Think about what this meant in ancient times. Think about what this meant in the ancient culture of Jesus' day or literally Moses' day because Moses is the one that wrote this. Think about what that meant in that Mideast ancient culture in the day. First of all, in, in Moses' day, if you're a rich and powerful man, you had multiple wives. You didn't have just one wife, you had multiple wives. I had a privilege and opportunity back in the early 90s to spend a month with Maasai warriors over in, in Kenya and East Africa. And every Maasai warrior, if, 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 you had, if you had a cow and you had a wife, and you approached the Maasai and said, we, 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 you either give us your cow or you give us your wife. Every Maasai warrior would have said, take her, man. I'm going to miss her. But hey, I got to have my cow. And so, so, so it was property. Women were property. Women are still property in so many parts of the world today. They're just property. And so think about what this meant. God said, listen, you don't need multiple wives. You're not a powerful man because you have multiple wives. You just need one. One good woman will do it for you. And all God's men said, amen. You ought to say amen right now, brother. And he said, listen, he said, you just need one. And if this is radical in those days. Multiple wives. And I know what you probably said. Well, you know, in the Bible, God, God, there was all kinds of multiple marriage. No, there were. I mean, God, you know, there were, there were men and had several wives. God never sanctioned it. God never blessed it. You say, well, Solomon had 600 wives. Yeah, Solomon was stupid too. Can I get an amen? Amen? I know Solomon's the smartest man in the world, but I'm just telling you, he was stupid for that. And God never sanctioned it. God never blessed it. You, you'll never find where God blessed multiple wives. He allowed it. But, and God's, how many of you are so glad God's a God of grace? So, but listen, he said, one, one woman's all you need. And just think about this. A woman is considered an intimate partner with a man. She's not a commodity. She, she's, not, she's, not, uh, she's not to be used and abused. She's an intimate partner with a man because she was taken from his side. She wasn't taking him from the heel of his foot to be trod on. She wasn't, she wasn't taking him, you know, out of his brain or whatever to be lorded over. She is taken from his side, and that denotes intimacy with man. Partnership with man, sexual intimacy, partnership. This is radical. She not, should not just be used. She is intimate with man. And this is probably the most radical of all, and this would be absolutely scandalous in Moses' day. She is worth so much to man that Adam said, a man shall leave his father and mother and go to his wife. And it was scandalous in Moses' day for a man 
to leave his own family to follow a woman. That's scandalous. And this is exactly what God said. God said, yeah, she is so valuable. She is so precious. You need her so much that a man will leave father and mother cleave to his wife. It's radical, special. No other relationship in all of human history is like this. And yet Satan hits you, ladies, he hits you with, you're not good enough the way you are. And in God's eyes, you're just a helper. You're just a helper. Now, let's, let's, let's unpack that just for a second. Go to Genesis 2.18. He says, I will make him a helper comparable or fit for him. I'll make him, underline that word, Helper. And, and, and when you read that, you think, well, this denotes inferior, subservient. But we got to look at the word helper because the, the word helper has a different kind of meaning. It all depends on the context in which you take that word. Uh, in the Hebrew language, is very descriptive. Greek language is very descriptive. Uh, English language, not so much. We know what we mean when we say different words. You know, I love my wife. I love pizza. I mean, you know, we know that's different kinds of love there. Well, it's kind of like, it's kind of like the same way with hel- helper. You have to take it within the context that God said it. It's kind of like the word fast. Fast, F-A-S-T, fast. Fast has so many different connotations. Fast can mean somebody runs fast. Uh, fast can mean like stand fast. You know, stand fast on your convictions. Don't be moved. Stand fast. Hold fast, the Bible says. Hold fast to that which is good. Fast can also denote, denote Kind of a shady deal. You know, well, he's always wanting fast money, just fast money. I mean, you know, so fast. So when, when, I, when, I, when I go to a football game and said, man, that running back was fast, I, I don't mean he had a shady deal. I don't mean he was trying to make a buck off somebody. I don't mean he was holding fast or standing fast. I mean, he was fast. So the bottom line is the same way in the word helper. You have to look at it in the context of what God meant for it to be. So, so the bottom line is helper cannot, listen to me, Helper cannot mean inferior. Helper in this context cannot mean lesser. Let me tell you why. Because over and over again, the Bible says that God is our helper. Does that mean we're over God? Does that mean that God's inferior to us? No. I'm so, I don't know. How many, come on, somebody say amen. How many of you are glad God's our helper? Amen? As a matter of fact, Moses named one of his kids God's our helper. David over and over again in the Psalms said, God, you're my helper. I don't know what I do. You're my helper. As a matter of fact, book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 6 says this, Therefore, we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. So helper cannot mean inferior. It cannot mean subservient. It cannot mean lesser. Well, pastor, what does it mean? Here's what it means. It means God created man. And man needs help. And all God's women said, come on, ladies, I'm trying to help you. All God's women said, man needs help. I need help. I do need help. And I know you said, well, my husband never had me. No, he, need, he needs help. We all need help. And so God said, listen, I created man. It's good, but he needs some help. And I'm telling you, I need help in every area. I'm so glad that my wife is there to help me and aid me, and we partner together. I need help on the big stuff. I need help on all that. I need help on the little stuff. I mean, even even doing laundry, I need help. And all God's people's that. I'm serious. I, I, I know you don't. I do my own laundry. Not because Phil is not willing. She's willing. But I'm the, I'm the one that got spaghetti on my shirt, not her. I'm the one that always gets something because there's no other place for it to land but right there. But anyway, so, I, so I, you know, so <laughs> the other day, we're doing laundry. And so she's upstairs. I'm down in the laundry room. Hey, honey, what setting should I put my shirt on? She hollers down. Well, what does the shirt say? And I hollered back up. Carolina Panthers? I mean, you know, yeah, it's just... Uh, I need help. You, you need help. Now, but basically, God is saying, man needs help. And it's not subservient, it's not lesser. Now, listen, not only that, he said, but a helper fit for him, comparable to him. Now, listen, listen to me. Not like him, not like him. 
okay? That, that's what the culture is pushing for, men and women to be alike. Are, are we equal in every way? Yes. We are equal in God's love. We are equal in God's value. We are equal in every way. God, God does not love men more than women, women more than men, and boys and girls more than anybody else. God, we are equal in God's eyes. God created us equal. But how many of you say amen? We are not alike, and we're not to be alike. And God doesn't want us to be alike. And all God's people say it. I'm telling you, we, by, by the way, has it ever, ever dawned on you that the further that this culture gets away from the Word of God, the more that we're having struggles with gender issues? Do, do you not connect those dots? Do you, do you think that's a coincidence? No. God said, listen, you've got to get your gender issues from my Word. I, I'm, I'm going to say this. I'm, I'm going to say it right now, and I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to hush, and I know I'm going to get some pushback on this, but we are not... To be alike. We're, we're under this battle where women want to be more like men. And, and the culture says, you need to be more like a man. And ladies, I'm going to say, I'm just going to tell you, in, in my perspective, and I don't think I'm alone in this, nobody said that a woman with great big shoulders and, and, and a six-pack looks that good. I'm telling you. I mean, the culture says, listen, the culture says, you need to be skinny. The culture says, you need to be so skinny, you have to run around in the shower to get wet. <laughs> I mean, you know, you, just, you need to be skinny. You either need to have skinny, or you need to be muscular. And I'm just telling you, there's not a guy in here that agrees with that. Every guy in here wants a woman. We like a little meat on the bones, and all God's men say it. Amen? I mean, we, listen, we do. Amen. Yeah, we like a little meat on the bones, baby. Skinny. Why is it? Oh, look at me. Oh, no. I'm going to Botox my lips. And you're so skinny, you turn sideways, you look like a zipper. I mean, you know, so it's just it's horrible. The, the culture says that's what you need. Magazines say that's what you need. Men never said that's what you need. I, personally, I wouldn't mind us going back to 14th century where women were a little plump. Amen? Look like little cherubs. I mean, you know, so nothing wrong with that. The culture's the one that tells you, oh, I need to be skinny. I need to be skinny. No, you don't. Get some meat on your bones, baby. We like it that way. Keep us warm at night. Amen. I'm trying to help you. That's all I'm doing. And the culture says men need to be more feminine. We, we, need, to be, we need to be more, we need, we need to be more feminine. And, and, and so this, this is a cultural thing. It's not a God thing. Yes, you are equal. We are created in the image of God just like it. We are equal in value. And how many of you say amen? Jesus died for all of us. But just because we're equal does not mean we're not the same. We're not the same. We are different. And we need to embrace that difference. And all God's people say it. It's amazing. Amazing. Well, what about this submissive stuff? I don't like that. It's one reason I don't like to come to church. And this is one reason I know you're going to get on that, all of this submitting to a man. I ain't going to submit to a man. What about this submissive stuff? I, I, listen, I, I understand that. But look, what you're talking about is Ephesians chapter 5, 22, where it says, wives, submit to your own husbands. But wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Sister, brother, roll that back a little bit. Before you park on Ephesians 5.22, you need to roll it back to Ephesians 5.21 where it says that we are to submit to one another in the fear of God. That our first role of submission as men and women needs to be to the Lord Jesus Christ. And we all need to be filled with the Spirit of God. Roll it back to that. You want to park on something? Park on that. Being filled with the Spirit of God. Nobody parks on that. Nobody does that. Well, I just, I just, I don't like that. Well, you can't pick and choose what part of the Bible you like, but before you ever get to wives submit to your husband, and by the way, I want to just say this, I want to say this. In, in, in defense of all that, why don't you just take a really strong look at the weight that God puts on men to love their wives? I mean, this is a weight. Just look at the qualifications. I know you don't like this submissive stuff, but you just look at the qualification that God placed on men to love their wives. Like Christ loved the church. How much did Jesus love the church? He shed his blood for the church. He died 
for the church. That's a weight. Uh, several of you, uh, as I was going home last Sunday, and you had to be here last Sunday to get this, but several of you kind of called me, and, and a couple of you texted me uh, because Last week I said that my wife is beautiful and I told you she's not going to like that because she honestly doesn't think she's beautiful. She really, really doesn't. It's not, a, it's not a fishing thing. She's not fishing for a compliment. She honestly doesn't think that she is. And I know that she is. And I told you she's going to be mad at me when I get home. And some of you texted me, are you all right? <laughs> you you going to be okay, preacher? Well, I got home, and she didn't like it. And she heard the message. She, she said, I, listen, they're all going to think that I, I said, honey, they're not going to think that because I, I went to great lengths to tell them that you don't think that you are. But honey, listen to me. You're beautiful. Then she kissed me. It was awesome, you know? It was, it was awesome. <laughs> she planted one on me, Bubba. It was awesome. Go tell your wife she's beautiful. Get a kiss too, all right, you know. So. And, and, I, have, and I have people, I have people say, well, you know, yeah, and people, you know, I know you're a preacher, but you're still a man. Let me ask you, what, 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 what kind of preacher, what kind of women turn you on? Her? <laughs> Amen? Her? Well, hey, preacher, what do you like? You like blonde, brunette, redhead? No, I like her hair, whatever color she wants it to be this week. Can I get an amen? Amen? amen. It don't matter to me. It don't matter. Blonde, brunette, redhead, honey. What you, yep, fine with me, baby. I didn't marry your hair. I married you. My wife knows that I'm for her. You see, here's, here's the deal. We, we, we're in this competition between men and women. We're not in competition. My wife knows I'm for her. My wife knows that I love her. My wife knows that I, that I, that I want to honor her and all of that. My wife knows she's the only one. She knows that for me. And yet the devil is going to come up to her and slip up to her and say, you need to get out from under that. You need to get free of that man. That man's Lord over you. No, I'm not loving over here. I love her with all of my heart, and she knows that. And you know, when the devil slips up to her, and when the devil slipped up to her when she was in her early 20s and said, you need to get out from under that, she said, go back to hell, devil. I kind of like what I got. And all God's people said, amen? amen. That's right. Amen. Now listen, 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 don't you romanticize this. Don't you romanticize what I'm talking about. I don't, I don't want anybody leaving this building, getting in the car. Well, I wish we had a marriage like Pastor Jeff and Miss Phyllis. No, I'm telling you right now, in our house, sometimes it's hell on earth. Can I get an amen? It is. We fight. We fight. Well, honey, why can't you? I sure wish I had a husband like Pastor Jeff. Oh, no, you don't. Just ask Phyllis. People come up to her all the time. He's so funny. I bet he's just a hoot around the house. You go, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he's funny, all right. Don't romanticize this because I'm telling you, listen, this is what I'm telling you. How many of you know this? Marriage takes work. Yeah. It takes work. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your position is. I don't care how much money you have. It takes work. And you've got to understand your roles. And my role is to just love her with all of my heart. All of my heart. God is saying, listen. Ladies, I want you to be pursued. Because, listen. I thought about this. I believe God knows everything. How many of you believe that? So when God was making Eve... And he was forming her. He knew that she was going to mess up. He knew that she was going to be the first of his entire creation, the first one, to go against his will. And he didn't crush her and say, I need to start over. No. Knowing all that, he pursued her. 
He might have even been telling her, Eve, I know something about you you don't know yet. But I want you to know that when you do what I know you're going to get ready to do, I'm not giving up on you. I'm going to pursue you. And I'm going to love you. And I'm going to see to it that you're protected and that you're provided for. That's how much God loves you. God created man. He said, this is good. But it's not good enough. Then you came along. Alongside of man who needs help. Who can't make it without you. No matter what he says. He can't do it. As corny as this may sound, as Jerry Maguire as this may sound, it's absolutely biblically true. You complete Him. That's how important you are. That's your role. Not good enough as a man? Lesser than a man? Are you kidding me? Absolutely not.